Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 12th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. Um, we have a problem in Christianity, in the church. We don't seem to know how to take the gospel out into the world anymore. There's been a technological revolution. Just like in 1440, Gutenberg invented the printing press, at least in Europe. I think the Chinese actually had it earlier, but as they did gunpowder, but that was locked up in China someplace. <clears throat> so Gutenberg invented the printing press, and that was the real foundation of the Reformation. The fact that you could, the Bible began to be distributed, and it was the Word of God that brought about the Reformation. It wasn't Luther, it was the Word of God. If you've ever read the 95 Theses, it was like, this was a pretty damp match to start the Reformation with. It was the Word of God that went forth. And when we start thinking that certain individuals were the cause, we, we missed the boat. It was the gospel unleashed uh, because the uh, Roman Catholic Church had kept it chained up, locked up. Uh, the laity were not allowed to read it for themselves. And it was not even translated. So the, in the Reformation, the Bible was translated in the people's language, which would have gotten you burned at the stake. Uh, William Tyndale, the author of this, the New Testament in English, first printed uh, English Bible, Wyc uh, Wycliffe had done a translation earlier, but that was before the printing press, so 1526. Uh, Tyndale actually consulted with Luther, and I believe like 100,000 of these were printed in Wittenberg or someplace in Germany there. So this... This was actually the size it was, too. The, the, you, this is a photo facsimile of a real one. I think it was located or is located in Madison, Wisconsin. A real, uh, genuine 1526 New Testament. And this is the foundation of the English Bible to this very day, of all good translations. Uh, the NIV is not a good translation in my book. But that, that, that established the foundation, and that was the basis for the Geneva Bible. That was the basis for, uh, the, essentially, the basis for the King James uh, and all the descendants from there, including the critical text. It still follows the, because it, it has to follow the pattern, because Tyndale was based on the Greek New Testament. So that's the English Bible tradition in a nutshell. And it doesn't include the NIV and the New Living Translation and those kind of things, which aren't real translations. So, But anyway, the, techno the technology, the revolution in technology with printing made the scriptures available to the common man. So it wasn't locked up in the church hierarchy anymore. And that's what was the real cause of the Reformation, the scriptures. Not a single man, not Luther. Luther was definitely flawed in many ways, and held on to Roman Catholicism quite tightly. Uh, never let go of a lot of the elements of it that are not biblical, but it's, he definitely was an important individual, the, uh, the one who began, you know, it, the, 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 uh, the fuel, it was sort of like a forest fire. There was a lot of accumulated fuel, uh, discontent with the people. The, the word of God had been distorted, the gospel had been distorted, and uh, it just needed a spark to get it started. And then it took off. It took off. Well, today, we have a new technology. We have the Internet. Technological revolution. I saw the whole thing develop over my life. Uh, there was, uh, of course, there was radio. And television was impractical for most, anyway. Radio, uh, you'd have amateur radio, but it wasn't. you weren't allowed to really broadcast. You could in contact individuals, but yeah, there's limit, uh, restrictions on what you could use that for. Uh, you couldn't like broadcast uh, like a broadcast station, uh, <clears throat> which was out of most people's reaches, and you had to have a license. Uh, the internet has opened things up, so it's amazing, amazing. I mean, it was ham. I, I never was licensed in that, but a ham radio, you could co contact people on the other side of the world. Uh, a, a, an individual, and but it wasn't like we have today. 
uh, the, the, the available technology, not only is a streaming, I don't think is the, the main thing, but the idea of, of on demand, on demand. So like when you stream, you might get a, a number of hits, but, but then over a period of weeks or months or years, it's still there. So what can we do with the Internet that the churches really, you know, COVID forced them to start streaming their services. But that's not reaching out and preaching the gospel in the world. That's not for the world. That is for the church. That is for people who can't attend the worship service because of COVID in this case, which what brought that in. But it does make it available. But the, the, the worship in a church is like the Lutheran worship, for example, that that I was looking at, uh, is not for the world. It's for the church. Same as Baptist services. <laughs> now I'm like, mm, what do I do now? Because, you know, I, I weighed this in the balance. It's like, no, this isn't Scripture. This isn't Scripture, and I'm not going to su submit myself to man's theology and man's ideas, including Luther. Luther, no. <laughs> Luther is, uh, well, there's other Christians. Luther's Luther. There's other Christians out there, too, that are like, hmm. I can think of one apologist that has a criminal background <laughs> that, that was... Uh, a, a sociopath or a, a psychopath. Sociopath, I don't think it's the actual category, but someone without a conscience and is not troubled by breaking any rules. Uh, and he was saved. But sometimes that a little bit of that personality leaks back up because he's still in the same flesh. And sometimes he, he does things and others look at that and said, you're not really doing this in the name of Christ, are you? Uh, and that, that happens too often. Uh, people become Christians for all kinds of reasons. Uh, like this guy that, that I'm thinking of, when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. Uh, so what I'm thinking of, we have this technology available. And again, I've, I've seen it. I worked with it. I used, uh, well, the, the rudiments of the Internet was uh, the phone system. We used dial-up bulletin boards uh, initially, so starting with 300 baud modems. Teletype speed. Do, 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 do. Yeah, some of us started with teletypes, too, by the way, uh, which were pretty slow. And then, uh, in some ways, it, the technology hasn't changed. I mean, it hasn't really improved in some ways, because the information you can transmit is pretty much the same. It's just the interface has changed. But today we have this technology. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago that video was just out of not even the ballpark. I did some work with the initial video. I think I owned a copy of, of the original Adobe Premiere, the first real editing software that was available for public use. But the technology just wasn't up to it, nor was the software. So, I mean, there was no question. You, you, you could not do HD. Of course, HD didn't even exist. You could, uh, to do broadcast quality, uh, uh, say, five minutes of broadcast quality, you were spending thousands of dollars for a, a, a digital recording system that would handle that. You could plug into a, a, a PC back then. Uh, that's, this, was, this was definitely like in the 90s. And, but now, uh, this, we think nothing of broadcasting to the entire world. People listening in, like in English, which is pretty much the widest distributed language, it's, it is the Greek of this modern age. Uh, and it's not uncommon, people from China or, or Russia or Australia or England or whatever, comments on a video. Or vice versa. Uh, 
we can use this technology, and the churches just they're 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 not up to speed. They're not up to speed. So, uh, and I'm talking mostly to young people out there because the internet's your 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 this is just part of your daily life, and you've almost used it. Uh, I see people on their, addictively on their phones, constantly walking down the sidewalk, a sidewalk, completely oblivious to God's creation and what's going on around them, and they're on their phone. So uh, we can use this, just like just like the, print, the printing press was uh, used to distribute the gospel, and we can use it in some amazing ways if we follow Christ. We have to remember, it's, it's like, the, uh, and this will get you criticized. It will get you criticized, just like it got Christ criticized. Christ was accused of eating with tax collectors and prostitutes. And indeed he did. They followed him. They came to him because he had a message that eternal life was a free gift. Believe in me, and you have eternal life. <laughs> so I'm telling you that message gets diluted by theology and other things today. But the churches, because of tradition, and this gets into a, a thing we can use to it for our advantage today. It's just the churches don't know how to do it. But the Scripture says we have the mind of Christ. Christ knows how to do it. It's like this. This is a roadblock. Roadblock to me, who was raised a Lutheran. This 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 prevents me. I can't join this the church in town, the churches in town that use this. This is a standard of church membership. No. Christ is the standard. We can't go out there proclaiming this. This is an obstacle. This prevents you from entering into fellowship. Just like the Baptists had their distinctives. The, the Presbyterians, they all have their own set of standards that aren't Christ's. You can't go out in the world like that. You've got to go out in the world with Christ, him alone, preaching Jesus Christ alone, because only he is the Savior. We have to leave that baggage behind. As Paul said, I become all things to all men that I may, be, may by all means win some. That means leaving aside the baggage, leaving aside our identities, our heritage, and going out there in Christ. Jesus said in John 12, 14, he said this, Very, uh, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And let me look up something else here. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is about laying down our identities, laying down our lives and picking up his life, going in his name, not in our name. Uh, or in the name of a denomination or organization or anything, going in his name alone, being his witnesses, his messengers, preaching his gospel. Otherwise, we're not going to be of any use. If we lay down our life, our identity, our interests, and take up his then we will bear much fruit. But if we go with our agenda for promoting our ideas and our sectarian organizations, we will remain alone. Churches don't understand that. You can't go out there 
and saying, yeah, we preach Christ, but we have all these other conditions you have to meet to come here. You can't do that. You're not going in his name. You're going in your name with your identity rather than him. So we have to lay that aside, and these organizations can't do it. Rome can't do that. The, the, Missouri, the Lutheran churches can't do it. The Baptist churches can't do it. The Methodist churches can't do it. None of them will do it because they have their tradition and their standards and their identity they're trying to protect. See, they, they, they have to be able to be willing to lay that down to take Christ to the world and not to allow anything to be a barrier other than what God himself has made barriers. Faith in Christ. Principally, you, you can only come through Christ. Christ is the narrow gate and the narrow way. People have to follow in him, have to be in him. He is the standard. He is salvation. He is the grace of God. It's all about Christ. It's not about what man has made. Now, we have an unusual opportunity with this new technology. We can go safely into some dark places if you're willing to lay your reputation down. I don't know if I'd, I'd recommend this for a pastor who is uh, actively serving as a pastor or cares about his reputation because there's many people out there, including in the church, will, that will use your efforts to reach certain people as a way to uh, cancel you because they don't care about uh, Christ's purpose is to take the gospel into all the world. They don't, they don't care that God desires all men to be saved. They're interested in other things. Themselves, principally, as is evident with all sinners. Self-centeredness is, I think, the original sin. It's what happens when you don't have Christ in you, uh, when you're cut off from God, when you're, you can't be the image of God. So what are you full of? Yourself. That's all that there's there. There's a, a missing space where Christ or that God is supposed to be. And uh, since you're not in relationship to him, you're just in relationship with yourself. So you're self-centered. You're focused inward. And that can produce some really bizarre effects. But that's where the identity crisis comes from that the world is experiencing. We were created to be the image of God. And without God in us, we can't be that. So what are we then? Just self. So you don't have your identity, you don't have your God-given identity as his image, as his temples, as children of God. What you have is a deformed image that is just yourself focused on itself rather than yourself in relationship to God. That's the problem. That's the root of the problem. It goes back 6,000 years. That's why these people are all confused. That's why these people can't find their identity, because you can only find your identity in Jesus Christ. See, Christians, we should understand what's going on in the world. We were among them. We experience these things. We are the living witnesses of Jesus Christ. You understand that? The apostles are not living witnesses that are here today. We have their witness in the Scripture. But we, those who have been saved by Jesus Christ out of sin, we know the power of God unto salvation. We know the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. He, sends, he saves wretched sinners like us. And we're his witnesses to this present world. We're not doing a very good job of it. But we can do a better job. We can do a better job. What I, I'm floating an idea here. You know, in, the, in a, uh, what does it say in the scripture that, uh, what is that, a threefold cord is not easily broken? <laughs> it's true. There is strength in numbers. We can support each other. That's, that's what church is supposed to be when, when, uh, in Hebrews, where it talks about I don't prepare these messages, so that, that's why. Uh, I should have restricted that to the New Testament. 
Mm, Hebrews 12, 23. No. Where is it? Oh, I know. Do not neglect. Uh, that's not it either. Ten twenty five. Okay. <laughs> Which keyword should I? Uh, search on, uh, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as is the, as is the manner of son, some, but exhorting one another, uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching. So, what the purpose of of meeting together, assembling as the church, is uh, verse twenty four too. Um, let us or twenty twenty three. Let us hold fast. Let us hold fast. Uh, no, let's go. Let's go up one more. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of son, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. And I suspect most of you see the day approaching. Uh, what I'm thinking about is a uh, an idea, what I want to float is this idea, is that those who know how to use the Internet... Uh, who know Christ and are not afraid because you know him, using the Internet, this new technology that God has given us, and the devil has it too, to proclaim the gospel in places that would never hear it otherwise. in some places that Christians would not touch with a 10-foot pole, including places like that, not restricted to places like that. You know, in society today, some of the people most affected by the, the uh, uh, distortion, we're all affected by it equally, but the distortion resulting from, or the identity crisis resulting from our uh, disconnection from God. That happened 6,000 years ago. This whole world, this whole, especially in the West, people are struggling to find their identity. The whole woke movement is about identity. The, the whole social justice movement is, is, a, is part of that, too. All these things, people are struggling to find themselves. Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? What's the purpose of life? It's not a new thing. We just see it manifested boldly today, vividly before us. So these people, for example, in the transgender fluid identity thing, what's wrong? Well, they're cut off from Christ. They're cut off from their God, the God's purpose in creating humanity, and they're struggling with the, their their identity because they're not connected to God. That's why. They're trying this, they're trying that, they're doing this, they're, trying, they're doing that, trying to find out who they are. We know who they're supposed to be, and we have the cure. It's Christ. He's the cure. Not psychotherapy, not man's wisdom, not counseling, Christ himself. The gospel is the cure for the identity crisis and every other ill. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for in it is the power of God unto salvation. In the proclamation of the gospel, the proclamation of Jesus Christ crucified for our sins and risen from the dead, 
We have the answer, brothers and sisters. We just need to take it to them. Not everyone will hear. That's up to God. And we can't do it by ourselves. It is up to the Holy Spirit to convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And what, is, what sin does he convict them of? Of not believing in the Messiah, not believing in Christ. That's the great sin that sends you to hell, not believing in the Savior. And he says, of righteousness, because Christ has ascended into heaven. Convicts them of what right it is to be righteous. Since they can't see Christ, the Holy Spirit brings that to their attention. He brings their, sister, their sin into their face, and what righteousness is into their face. And the fact that this world has already been judged, the ruler of this world has already been judged. This world is terminal. We don't have to do it alone. We can't do it without him. God is at work. We are his co-laborers. There is synergism. Paul says so. We are co-workers with Christ, with the Spirit of God, with God Almighty in bringing people to Christ. We can't do it without him, and he can't do it without us, because someone has to proclaim the gospel, as Paul clearly says in Romans chapter 10. How can they hear unless somebody preaches? And how can they preach unless they're sent? Sent by who? Christ. What is the word that sends us? Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Preach the gospel to all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's our commission. We're not sent by a church. We're not sent by a denomination or a missionary organization. We're sent by Christ. And we have the technology, and it's almost free. Wonderful. And it will even translate for us. You think that? Think about that? So how do we use this? Well, better than we have been doing, I, I think. Uh, what I'm proposing is that we sort of like loosely network with each other. Some of you are already doing this. Some of you are thinking about doing it. We can do it better together in a not kind of a no organization, no nothing like that. Uh, just a network and uh, web based. I'm thinking the, the two major social media. Uh, things uh, by far are Facebook, number one, and YouTube, number two. Some of you are on other things, Snapchat, whatever, whatever else that I have no familiar with, X, uh, Twitter. Uh, I've got a Twitter account, but there's, there's uh, some others, others smaller, and sometimes smaller is even better. Together, we can do a lot more than we can individually. And we can help each other. We can encourage each other. We can, can assist each other uh, in resources, in other things, uh, share resources, uh, share knowledge, technical knowledge, give advice, you know, what, what not to waste your money on and things like that, because we've already done that. Uh, like what kind of microphone to use, depending on how, I mean, you can use a phone. You don't have to be uh, sophisticated. You don't have to have a, a mixer and a stream deck and a, a high power computer and all this or a, a one of these things. Uh, you don't need that. It's like microphones. Uh, I would say the, a good microphone is probably one of the and lighting. <laughs> like you, you can use a, a phone or whatever, but lights are important. So technical details like that. I mean, if, if your video, if people can't clearly understand you, the sound quality, uh, that is the most important thing, sound quality, even on video. And so there's technical details like that that some of us know about and others might, may not. So we can help people that way. We can help people understanding Scripture. And we can, uh, if we, for example, sort of subscribe to each other's work, 
and keep a, a, a loose eye. We don't want to be uh, masters standing over your shoulder or anything like that, but just guard one another without getting excessive about it. You know what I mean? Just So if somebody seems to be going in the wrong direction, maybe tap them quietly on the shoulder and say, this isn't, uh, I don't think you're doing the right thing. And and if it continues, then, you know, we follow the instructions of Scripture. Uh, in order to, for the purpose of God, out of love. There's a lot of people, discernment ministries, who are not acting out of love, but they're acting out of self-aggrandizement. There's some out there that are quite clearly doing it to feed their own egos. And they attack... Uh, especially high, um, popular people uh, because they know that it will cause a lot of attention to come to them. And we don't want to uh, encourage that. Sometimes you, you, you need to... It uh, doesn't mean somebody can't uh, criticize what certain people do. We, we certainly have the right to do that. Yeah, we're, we're accountable one to another according to the scriptures. And we do judge those inside the church. So, and you don't have to have special credentials to do that. that that's a whole other scam. You don't need to, to go to Bible college or, or university or seminary, God forbid, because they'll just fill you full of worthless ideas that keep you from following Christ. Because the whole purpose of those things is to continue in it, continue the tradition. It is not to educate you better in the scriptures and help you understand the scriptures. That's not what they teach. <laughs> they don't do that. Uh, so, uh, which one of the uh, disciples that Jesus chose had a degree in theology? Theology is nothing but man's opinion. Don't think you have to have that. What, you, what is required, you must know Jesus Christ. You must know him. And understand the gospel. That's about all. That's all you really need. And if he is sending you, we can work together to better proclaim the gospel. Nobody else is really doing it. You've got organizations doing it, but they're, they're upholding standards that aren't the standards of Christ. And uh, some of them are doing it for wrong reasons. So what my uh, I guess what I'm suggesting is that if we were to assist each other, maybe have a, a Facebook group or something like that, that not secret. We have to do everything openly. That's the way Christ did it. That's the way the apostles did it. Follow them, and then help one another to proclaim Christ. Assist one another and to act in love toward each other. What think ye, brothers and sisters? There's some places, some of the women out there need to be involved in this too, because there's some places women can go, we can't as men, and vice versa. But all of us have been equipped by the Lord uh, for his purposes. And all of us who are witnesses of his salvation, because he has saved us, need to take that message out there. And we each have gifts from God and circumstances set up by God to enable us to go to particular people out there. One person can't do it. There are some people out there that have been saved from all kinds of things, and you're a witness to the power of God's salvation in those particular situations. And your voice has a particular strength in, to those who are still in bondage to those sins. Let's help each other proclaim Jesus Christ. Comments are open. I want to hear from you. Uh, 